Well, hi, and welcome to another episode. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I, I'm, I'm doing good. I, I'm doing good. You know, the obviously we always talk about what's going on in Southern California, but I, I'll be honest with you, as we do the show right now, it is cooled down a little bit. So, uh, yeah. so I'm excited that it's cooled down. I know when we complain about the weather, we joked about the hurricane a couple of weeks ago. That really wasn't a hurricane. And then, um, you know, for California, it's been kind of warm recently and now it, it feels like it's it's really nice it's like why we live in southern california i agree um to the audience to all of you people out there we are this episode um we are pre-taping um because of scheduling um conflict so this will probably be a little bit of old news by the time you hear it but yes it was just labor day weekend it is it's we are in store for a huge warm up. I think there's a huge heat wave coming, Dave. So yes. bite your tongue. But um, <laughs> uh, we, spent, we spent yesterday Labor Day at the beach and it was really quite warm. Um, it was beautiful. It was actually a perfect day. But those hurricanes are real. Those waves were insane. It was insane. And we went to Zuma Beach and anybody that knows yeah. Zuma Beach, it's a huge stretch of sand before you hit the, the water. The waves were coming so high. We had to sit like by where you park the car. The, the wow. volleyball courts, everything was underwater. It was a huge, everything was water. And um, at first we sat closer to the water line and then the waves started coming up. Everybody starts, everybody on the beach starts backing up and backing up. And then finally we we're like past the volleyball courts at the parking lot. And finally I said, girls, let's just put the stuff in the car. Let's just put everything in the car except what you need. You know, and I've got my Tommy Bahama chair. So I wear it as a backpack. I put what we needed in there. And then we just were on foot. And I said, this is like, this way we don't have to worry Cause you know, I have the whole tent set up. I have everything set up and I'm like, forget it. Today's not the day. I'm not redoing this again. So, um, and you know what days like that, it, it just turned into such a fun day. It turned into like adventures. We walked up and down the beach. The girls kept finding like berms and, um, you know, Keegan's like back flipping off of it. And, you know, it just turned out to be such a fun, such a fun day. You know, those are like, you can't plan that stuff. And then we you know came what's... home and grilled. Yeah, it was a great day. All right, I got to ask you a beach question because for me, I'm one of those guys that the beach is the one place I finally feel just relaxed. Yeah, you know, I'm never looking at my phone. I'm not thinking about work. I'm not thinking about all the stuff that you stress out about through a regular day. But when I go to the beach, I literally I, I can sit on the beach and just look at the waves for eight hours, and I, and it, it is the best place to be for me. I don't go enough. I mean, it's not far away, but. For me, there's so many memories that come from, you know, going to the beach and going and watching the ocean and that come from, even though I'm in San Diego now, you know, I grew up in Los Angeles and it's, for me, it was, we'd get on the 10 West, we'd go through that tunnel, you know what I mean? Through Santa Monica. And then yeah. if you stay on it, it takes you to Malibu. But when you come out of that tunnel and you see the water and you see the sand and it takes me back to my childhood. And so... For you, you've mentioned on the show a few times how the beach has been part of your life forever. And then, of course, you did a TV show extremely uh, popular, had to do with the beach. When you go to the beach, do memories come back? Because whenever you look at old films like, you know, our, our parents and everyone has the, the cameras, they're always taken at the beach. Every family always seems to have something with the water. What comes to your mind when you think about going to the beach and, and where does your mind take you? Well, let me say, first of all, I think it's scientifically proven that the beach is a healing place. So Agreed. for me, a lot of it is like the sound, too. Um, I go to the beach so much that there's not I don't have like particular memories of it. It's always a new memory being made. Um, I think as a kid, it's like a play. You go there to play. Right. It's it's always like an adventure. It's a play. It's a swim. It's all of this. And as an adult, it's a you know, it's a relaxation. It's a break from life. It's, you know, to get back in touch. It's all of those things. So um, it's just a happy place for me. So no matter what, you know, different days, different beaches, I go up and down the coast. Um, I don't have like nothing that like, comes to mind. Just I've so much of my life has been spent on that beach that it just feels like home. Honestly, I just feel like at home, I'm happy. I'm like, ah, I'm here. And it's it just, did it ever feel like I don't say work, but stress that, you know, again, you're you're recognized. I mean, you've been recognized since, you know, you were a teenager, that it's not 
just, you know, a therapy place to go, but feel like, you know, people are watching or people are taking pictures where it's not as fun or not as enjoyable as it should be? Um, no, nah, I just, I Good. don't even think about that stuff. I, I, you know, I think everybody can be self-conscious at the beach because you're in a bathing suit. Um, I tend to keep my cover up on, <laughs> but I also keep a cover up on because I don't want to get burned. To be completely honest, I wear like a thin um, thing over so it can get wet, whatever. I just don't want to get burned. I get, we get so burnt these days. You only have to be outside for a couple minutes and you are fried no matter how yeah. much sunblock you have on. It is scary. It is not the same. Um, yeah. So I like to keep everything just covered because it's just, I sit in the shade and I cover up and it's weird because I've always sat, you know, in the sun with sun oil on and just times have really changed the weather and the sun, the ozone layer, everything has really, really drastically changed. So, um, listen, I wear my cover up. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> my feet are in the sand. The waves are crashing at my feet. I can hear the ocean the, yesterday. There were so many dolphins. You saw like really? three or four pods. Yeah. Three or four pods come from different directions and like meet up right in front, like right, right, at, right at the shore. And they were playing in those big waves. They were having a blast. There must have been 15 to 20 of them total. Oh, that's cool. I've never hours, seen that before. For hours. Because there's so many in Malibu. But um, I, I don't think you can go to Malibu Beach without seeing dolphins. Like they're there yeah. everywhere there. But um, yesterday they were having a party. They were having a Labor Day party. And um, <laughs> It was so cute and so sweet. And, um, you know, yeah, those waves are huge. So they were definitely playing in them. Good deal. And, yeah. And then, of course, as you, as you were, I cut you off, but as you were saying, you, you build up that appetite and then you went home and you, you kind of did a barbecue. Is that what you said? Yeah, we grilled. Um, yeah, we grilled salmon and asparagus. And, um, yeah, it was just a good... It was just a good end of summer beach day. I probably nice. will go back to the beach before the summer is over. But it was like, you know, the big outing with friends, you know, uh, in tow and all of that. Good. So, yeah. 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 There's nothing I mean, like being should... tired at the end of the day after a long day at the beach. And you go like, all right, tonight's going to be a really good sleep. This is going to be great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know. I, I think <laughs> I slept eight and a half hours. I want to say I slept eight and a half hours. <laughs> I'm jealous. That's a lot. That's good. Yeah, that is good. That's 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 really good. That's awesome. So uh, a lot, obviously, uh, you know, going on, and it's always exciting to to see what's happening. Real quick, want to touch on for me as as a fan of you know TV and movies. I say this all the time. I really look forward to the month of September because the new shows come out, and I want to see you know, what the storylines are, where do things end off? And there's certain shows that I've set on my DVR to record. I have like 50 something that record on a, on a regular basis. And I'm really bummed out that this year is going to be different. Uh, unlike any other year that I can remember. And, and it might be for a long, long time. Um, you know, you obviously you have friends in the industry on, on both sides. Is it difficult for you to know that you have friends that are, are struggling right now or where are you at? I mean, you're also a viewer just like me. I mean, it's a really, it's a really strange time. I, it, I feel like this is not just going to go back to normal. I feel like there's going to be a big, um, there's going to be like a big turn up in this. I, I was reading an article the other day um, in the Hollywood Reporter, and you know they're saying that studios should split from streamers and that really Netflix is the only real streaming company. They're the only ones that like have it down. They're the only ones that could survive this. Um, but you know, the, the studios should go back to doing, you know, TV programming and give the streamers a run for their money, go into competition with them rather than trying to, you know, uh, work with them. And then we can go back, then everything, you know, we can go back to working with studios because the streaming is what is the real issue, right? Um, for everybody. And I just don't know. I don't see it just like going back to what it was. Something has got to change. Something has got to give. I don't know what that is. I hope that they they figure it out soon. But, you know, I, I feel like this is going to be a big, a big turn of events, a big thing. Something's Something's got to give because you can't just keep going like this. People are, you know, struggling. 
Most yeah. people that uh, are in the industry work paycheck paycheck to paycheck. They're not, you know, and, and sure, some successful writers and whatnot and actors have some money saved up, but they're probably living off of that right now. And that can't last forever. So um, I don't know. I mean, I wish I had some answers for me. It just seems it feels scary. Yeah. Um, it feels like they need to start talking. Somebody needs to make a move. Somebody needs to put themselves out on a limb and go and make a big decision. This needs to happen. And, um, you know, I, we're, we're just the only thing we can do is sit back and watch. But, um, you know, I don't know. It's just not going to go back to what it was. So what that means, I'm not sure. How long it's going to take, I don't know. Uh, it's just so much of the unknown. But um, And I do think it would be great. I do think it would be great if studios went back to doing their own programming, doing their shows, and maybe, you know, just changing, thinking about what made them go to streamers. You know, think about that and, and apply it to their own home. You yeah. know, bring it home. But, you know, easier said than done. Easier for me to sit here, you know, in the audience and and say they should do this, they should do that. I don't know all the ins and outs. And um, I just think it's time. I think somebody needs to gamble. You know, if you don't take a risk, you don't win. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I hope it's, uh, hope it's you know, again, as I said, I hope it goes back as close to normal as my normal viewing is, but it doesn't sound like it's going that direction. It's I don't think so. I, I, I'm one of those guys that obviously I do have Netflix and, you know, I'm discovering shows that other people are watching and, you know, I, you everyone asks each other, it almost seems like a common question. Hey, what are you watching? What do you recommend? And, you know, different things that I'm, I'm trying to catch up on because there's not enough time in the day. And I'm loving a lot of the things I'm watching. Like, I'm thinking I'm going to make it. Like, it's not one of those where I'm going to sit home at night and start <laughs> reading books. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not. Um, and, and I got to tell you, the show that I've enjoyed a lot lately, and, and man, I'm so far behind it. Anyone who listens going, hey, where were you 10 years ago? <laughs> I've been watching Shameless. And, uh, oh, yeah. And, and, I, and I've loved it. I'm almost done with it. I'm in like season nine now. I think there are 11 seasons of it. But the acting is outstanding. William H. Oh, wow. Macy is so so good in this, and everybody's good in it. But the storylines, almost every no, no scene seems like a waste scene. Everything is is good, and uh, and and I watch like three of them a night. I absolutely love it. Oh, it's a fantastic show, amazing yeah. show. Yeah, that's one of the it's one of the classics. So, well, then do you watch Sons of Anarchy, Breaking Bad? Breaking you Bad was, was lo love Breaking Bad's right there in my top one or two of all time and so I, I didn't watch sons of anarchy but i oh. did watch uh breaking bad and sopranos are probably my two favorite shows of all time you've got to watch sons of anarchy it's you know what that show is what got me into tv and what got me into binge watching i had never done it before i was not a tv yeah watcher um i was i always, i'm someone who comes home and puts music on um and or I would read and Sons of Anarchy. I was like, wait, what is that? Watched one episode, ruined my life. Ruined my life. <laughs> I am a TV watcher. That show yeah. is so good. You want to talk about acting? Oh my god, acting and writing. That's a that's an amazing show. You have to catch up on that. But you're right. This is a time to discover things you haven't watched before because there's so much programming out there. There's so much. Yes. So there's, yeah, you could watch it for days and days, but people who are caught up on everything, the, you know, content is drying up fast. Uh, yeah. So I don't know how long they can survive like this. You know, what are they going to do? Push, you know, pull out all the oldies and, you know, do commercials for that. They've got to have new content because um, it's just, there's not much of it left. So, but yes, watch Sons of Anarchy. Oh my God. I'm like, my head is spinning that you haven't yeah. seen that. You'll no, love it. I haven't. Okay. You'll love it. All right. All right. Well, it, it goes on the list then, because I said I'm yes. almost done with Shameless. I'll be doing Shameless in about a week, so uh, we'll we'll be good. I'll move. I'll move on. It, just you know, speaking of you know, I think a lot of people don't understand, and I don't understand either. So I'm going to ask you. I I know most people understand that actors get paid for reruns. Mm -hmm. Do do writers get paid for reruns too? Yes. They do. Okay. Yes. Good. They get residuals. So, so when you you know when you negotiate a deal or your agent negotiates a deal it just it's just common on or is it for every actor it's different on the percentage you get 
Mm, I don't know about no. I think it's um, I think it's a standard. Like okay. it's just what I think it's based on your salary. So like whatever you made on that project, you get a percentage of that. But residuals, you know, they do like they lessen over time. But like with streaming, you know, when that was not a thing. So say you did a show and um, it's now being bought by streamers and, you know, being played nonstop. A lot of people don't have those deals in place. So it gets yeah. really weird. Um, I do. I get residuals and I'll get. I'll get it's so weird with streaming because I'll get stacks of like really good checks and you're like, wow, OK, this is amazing. And then I'll get stacks of like four and five cent checks. Uh. And I'm like, what is this? And <laughs> it honestly pisses me off because um, yeah. I don't want to for me to open the envelope. And I don't I don't mean to sound <laughs> crass, but for me to open <laughs> the envelope. And I'm looking at how much did that envelope cost? How much did that yeah. postage cost? They printed this check. How much was the, the paper and the ink? And this check is for four cents. I'm now supposed to, and they have the worst prefer, is it called preparation. Wait, what are those lines that you, yeah. you rip? Perforated. On? Perforated. Perforated. They're the worst on the checks. You have they're not yeah. like um it, it's not where like the check is folded. You have to take it all apart and I don't know what is going on with the payroll company, but they need to figure it out. It is so hard to pull these checks apart. I'm supposed to go through that, sign it, and my phone app will not deposit it because it's so small. So I have to go. I was going to ask you, how do you, yeah, how do you go, go to the, you, and you can't even do it through the ATM. You have to go to the yeah. teller, right? No, it won't take it. Yeah. I have to go into the poor teller. So now I'm wasting his time. He's got to, he or she has to put the, all the checks do this thing. And we're sitting there waiting for four cent checks. And the other day, the guy looks at me because you, you just deposited a whopping $30. And I was like, Damn you it. know, at the end of the day, it's like, okay, $30 is $30. Fine. But I definitely earned. <laughs> yeah. No <laughs> that kidding. $30 has been spent and earned and, um, by all of us, you know, it's just, and who puts that check in that envelope? Like none of this adds up. So, um, <laughs> sorry, I know I went left on that, but no, no, just, no, no. It's funny as hell. I, I yeah, I, I know what you mean. I've done, I've done commercials and I get checks from, uh, Disney, you know, from broadcasting and you're right. The checks are pain in the ass. And I always seem to miss one side that I didn't tear that I was supposed to tear. And, and it is, it's a pain. Like literally you got to pull out a, get a paper cutter or scissors because you're going to screw it up. You're going to tear right through the check. Yeah. These are you and yeah. me problems, but it is, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And yeah. listen, when the checks are, when the checks are meaty, I'm okay. I'll do it all day long. I'll sit down and I'll make, you know, I'll make a coffee and make a whole thing of it. But when they are four and five and seven cents, I want to like, I want to roll them up in a ball and like, you know, practice basketball. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I don't get it. And, oh I, my and, gosh. and even Keegan said to me, why don't they just keep them all and just send one check? And I was like, kid, because that would make too much sense. Yeah. No kidding. If they just paid you like once every six months, it would be worth it, you know, but right? I have to do it yeah, all the time. Yeah, a absolutely. Yeah. So I always heard like, you know, Seinfeld and Larry David make well over a hundred million dollars a year just off of reruns, you know? And then, you know, like the, the TV show, the office is always on somewhere. Law and order is always on somewhere when you flip through your television and I'm going, someone's making a lot of money. And so it's, I guess, Dick Wolf, the one who created Law and Order, probably makes the most money off of it. But it's still, it is, it, those shows are always available. They're always on, on TV all the time. So is there a magic number that you have to get to? Like, is it 100 episodes to get into reruns? And, you know, the, the show, I'll give an example. When I flip through, Young Sheldon has reruns. I'm like, didn't that show just start? Like, how did they already have enough shows for reruns but i guess they do i guess they do have enough shows to rerun that show well listen i'm ancient so um what i remember from when i was a kid and i am sure this has changed i'm sure this is outdated information so don't hold me to it but it used to be something like when you had a commercial and now commercials are different too you could book what was like called a national or you could book one that was going to be in a hot spot which meant like um if it was going to play a lot you weren't going to get paid every single time like there were certain deals to be made out but I think a commercial had to play a certain amount of times, like say 20 times or something like that before you started um, accumulating residuals. As far as um, TV shows and stuff like that, I think it runs twice. After it's run two times is what I believe I want to say used to be at least. It runs two times and then it's considered 
um, a rerun, so to speak, yeah. and then you start you start gaining residuals. Um, so you know when you, when you're when you have streaming, I mean, now it's like, uh, how do you how do you exactly. calculate that? Because you know, yeah, that's at people's demand, right? So it all gets very sticky and icky and weird, and it just needs to be protected. You know, it's not one of these things like, oh well, you know, people are being petty. They're not. This is. <laughs> This is like um, sort of like overtime for people. You know, it's sort of that sort of, yes, you have to count the minutes, the hours. You have to. It all matters. It all adds up. And this is why we do the work. And this is why we agree upon a certain price because we know we're getting back end stuff. So it's a big deal. It's a bigger deal than people, you know, I think that they really realize. No, I understand. Did so for you, as I said, you started when you were so young, and and at the time, I'm sure you know you're doing it. No, it's a job, but at the same time, it's not really a job. I mean, you're you're a kid. You're in front of a camera. You're getting attention. At what age did you realize this is big business? Um, I think that. I mean, I think my mom always kind of made me aware that it was big business because she would explain to me that um, you, about professionalism and about not being a pain in the ass as a kid on set, that to be respectful of people's time, um, that it costs money. And, you know, these people were, you know, uh, these were people that you needed to respect and you want to get in good graces with them. And, um, you know, she just kind of taught me the etiquette of, I think business life like that. So I, I always went into it knowing, and I think when you know that, and then you start looking for the signs, it's all very obvious. Um, but I think once I was on um, Charles in Charge and we worked for NBC Universal and it was, you know, when you start getting classes on how you have to act outside of work, you know, and how you you have to answer questions and you you were prepped for all this stuff. I was like, man, now this is bleeding into my personal life, you know? <laughs> like who, who has those conversations with you? Is it the people that uh, own the uh, show? Like PR, PR okay. team. Well, I come, you know, it's, it, it's part of like the PR prep, uh, you know, before you do press and before I'll do this, you, I don't think they do that anymore. I, hopefully they don't. I don't, I, I don't, I don't hear about that anymore, but you know, yeah, you're prepped on what what to promote, what to say, what not to say, you know, how to handle yourself, how to behave. I think people, you know, now people want to see the real the real actors, the real personalities. So yeah. I think a lot of that has changed. But back then, you know, it was like, yes, 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 everything's great. You know, we all are best friends. Um, it was all of that. You know, I think people, yeah. you know, honestly, I think a lot of the audience doesn't understand, didn't know that that's, you know, we're, we're programmed to answer like that. And, um, you know, it, it is what it is. And it was what it was. Luckily, it's not like that. You're free to be your own person, wear what you want um, and be who you are. And I, I like that. I do think that there still is a lot of etiquette that goes into it. I do think that they are prompted, you know, on, you know, certain, certain topics to bring up and, you know, what to promote about the project and this and that. And they do try to be kind to each other, but at least now you can sort of like throw some of the truth in there and you're not going to be like blacklisted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you were on like Charles in charge and Baywatch, do they ever talk about your personal life? Like they knew you were at the age where you're going out, you're going to clubs, you're get your about who you're around and what you're doing when you're, you know, in public off camera. Well, when I was in Charles in charge, I was just a kid. You know, I, I was uh, not, I was not going out. I was not doing very much, maybe once in a while on the weekends, but with other kids, it was very, um, very work oriented, uh, at that age, I, I just, you know, every night was a school night, to be honest. And yeah. and I would go to like the Alfie soda pop parties on the weekends, which was with other actors and other, you know, working kids. And that was about as wild as I got. Um, but Baywatch, you know, yes, I was definitely in the clubs at that age. And um, I, they didn't care that much about that. Um, but it was they cared more about you representing the brand and wearing the bathing suit. And I would fight. There was a lot of fighting with them uh, with that. Um, 
I remember it was like early, early morning before we start work. They want to do this, you know, this news. There's this big news crew is coming out. Katie Kirk is going to interview us. And it's early, early morning. We're sitting in chairs on the beach, on the sand, and it's freezing. And um, oh I have my lifeguard jacket on over the bathing suit and they want me to take it off. Not the news crew, the producers. And I'm like, no, I, I, I'm freezing. And um, they, w one of the producers, I won't say which one, came up and whispered in my ear, do you know how ugly you look right now? Wow. I was like, wow. I was like, you know, fuck you. Yeah. Now I'm definitely not taking the jacket off. Now I'm pissed. Now, like, you, you just, you don't talk to me like that. That's just so rude. And um, the news crew noticed and saw this, like, back and forth and wanted to interview me separately after it was all over. And they approached me, and um, the production caught wind of that. And, man, did they put a stop to that quick. So, you know, um, even, you know, so even although they didn't, they weren't as strict as to what we were to say and do and everything like that, they didn't want things falling through the cracks like that either. So, you know, it is what it is. And all in all, I had a great experience on that show. I just think that there was, you know, it was at a time when there still was a lot of like um, chauvinistic behavior and, you know. All of that was still sort of um, common, should I say? And well, you, uh, it's yeah. One thing you did on that show is you mentioned it here that you cut your hair short without mm -hmm. their permission. Did that turn into an issue? Um, it, you know, they were upset about it. it. You know, it didn't become a huge issue because what could you do at this point? Like, yeah. <laughs> the hair is gone. Like, there's not much you can do about it. And um. I was hoping that they maybe saw, you know, where I was coming from as to why I did it and um, and appreciate that, you know. And listen, the, the character became very popular, as did most of the characters on that show. Nobody was pissed. I had short hair. Um, I had my own different separate audience. And instead of, like, appreciating that, I got a lot of um, – I would read, and I still read it sometimes in the tablets, like or in articles where the production would say that Pam and I were like in competition, or like I felt um, this and that because of Pam. And it's such bullshit, and it's so annoying. And they, I mean, listen, they were known to make up stories. They were known, and they admit it that they would stage. Um, this is later seasons. They would stage actors like fighting on set because there was like paparazzi and stuff. Yeah watching them being filmed. So they would fake things so that it, they would get press on it. Listen, that's not the craziest thing I've ever heard. A lot of people do a lot of stuff for press, but they're known for it. And, you know, to say that Pam and I were like in competition, that's the whole point why I cut my hair is because I didn't want any kind of competition. I wanted it to be separate. And she played like an established um, lifeguard. You know, she was she was in a, a different category. I was a kid. I was supposed to be a kid who's seen the ocean for the first time as a trying out to be a lifeguard. So I really just wanted some separation in there. And, um, and then they wanted to use the excuse of why I got a, uh, a boob job, you know, why I got an augmentation because, uh, you know, being in competition with Pam, what about all the other women I'm standing next to on yeah. the beach, guys? What about all the extras you've got, all the background you've got in the, um, you know, the atmosphere actors that you have lying around? No, this is not just because of Pam, and I didn't even get huge boobs. This was because I had to wear that stupid one-piece bathing suit that was like, when you're a small-chested female, you want to wear a two-piece because it just looks better and you can – um yeah, you can perk the girls up a little bit. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's a better look. <laughs> that that red, especially, just particularly, that red one-piece bathing suit for the lifeguard that they had us wear was so unflattering being flat-chested. And it made you more flat. And it just was awful. And um, I made a stupid decision, you know, um, as a young girl. And I did that. And... um it had nothing to do with Pam. Like, if I was going to compete with Pam, I would have had like you know huge, huge. Oh yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't that. It was the environment. It was you know 
everything that was around me. It was me having to put on that bathing suit every day. You know, it was a personal thing. Not everything is a competition, but you know, they they like they like to make up these stories. So, so they also, you, uh, also like this story. I, I just want to clear the air on this one. They yeah. also like to tell this story that I did it in the middle of an episode. Well, guys, um, I hate to break it to you, but you, you don't just go overnight and get a, a boob job and then you go to work the next day. That's not how it works. <laughs> it's not like putting There's rims no on a car. no way to have a boob job in the middle of an episode. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Boy, yes. Oh, my gosh. So j just curious, now that you, you kind of touched on it, when you went and had the procedure done, um, at what point did you say you re you regretted it? When did you go, you know what, this was not the best decision for me? Was it years? Was it right away? Like, what made you feel like this wasn't the right move? Okay, well, I got the first one. And um, listen, what I think happens and what I, I see and hear about and read about happening is women go in and get it and they wish they had gotten them bigger. So they yeah. always tell them, like, get a size bigger or whatever. Um, so as soon as I got it done, they were just too big. They just were too big for my frame. They they looked cr a little crazy, in my opinion. And so I immediately knew, like, the, this is so big. Why did, you know, why are they this big? As soon as that healed, I went and got them reduced. Oh, wow. And, so you went through the recovery yeah. process twice. Yes. And wow. so um, I got them reduced, and they were great. I lived with those for many, many, many years and was very happy with them, so. That's that's Nicole's boob story. <laughs> <laughs> the story that, of Nicole and her girls. Yeah. That, that, that is funny. Well, again, it is it's Baywatch. And I think most people, when they think of Baywatch, they you know, always think of, you know, the bathing suits and they think of the boobs and they think of the opening scene with Pam running, you know, on the beach. I mean, the, the way they do the camera and what they keep showing in the opening is for a reason. You know, right? It's what you know. They, they say all the time. It's what guys look at first, and boom, you have an audience. Doesn't matter what the storyline is. Guys like to look at pretty girls. It's there are certain girls on the show decided, obviously, you know, not to do it, and there's certain, most of them did do it. But I was just curious to know if the producers or someone says to you, "Hey, you know what? You might want to go see a surgeon. You know, you might want to." Uh, is there pressure at all from the people that ran that show to say, "You know what? You you'd be better off if you did this." No, 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 Good. no, 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 no. They never said anything like that to me. The only thing that was, um, and I've talked about this before. The only thing there was is there was a weight clause in the contract. You couldn't go up or down within five pounds of wow. your current weight that you were hired at. That was a clause, but you know, that makes sense too. You know, they did don't they want anybody. You in every week? No, no, they never oh, did a good. weigh in. I think they had it there in case, um, and you know what I what how I like to look at it is I think that um, in case someone got unhealthy, yeah. you know, with um, being on the beach and the pressures of that, because that could go either way too, right? So um, you never know if an eating disorder starts to happen or exactly. something like that. So I I do think that that clause is important. I don't I don't look at it as just they don't want you to gain five pounds. I don't look at it just like that because they didn't weigh us in and they never. They never commented on anything like that. So I think, you know, I, it, it is a good clause to have, you know. Yeah, well, I understand. For for TV, I, I understand, especially you said the unhealthy part, you know, where you're believing yeah. for anorexic and you're, you're looking out for those signs. I was I was saying to uh, my son the other day was on a flight and he said he had the, the seat on the end dial and he said every time the flight attendant walked by, she kept knocking his arm. I was just trying to fall asleep. And he said she was she was a bigger woman. And I said, it, things have changed. I said, you know, your mom used to be a flight attendant and uh, they she had to weigh in every single week. She had oh. to be a certain weight and had, they literally weighed you in every week to make sure that you went that weight. But of course, they, they've gotten rid of that. But that's just man, that's work. You know, that's not, you know, obviously in a show where you're in a bathing suit all the time so it wasn't a matter of uh it was it was a health thing which is a good sign you know that you i mean i think so I, th I also think they didn't want somebody you know overeating and like getting obese exactly. and not looking not looking healthy in that respect as well because exactly. you are playing representing a lifeguard right so either yeah. way i think it was i think it's more of a health thing because they definitely weren't you know watching what we were eating at lunch and um they weren't doing anything like that so 
Have you ever uh, worked with somebody that drastically changed their appearance? Like you guys had a break and then all of a sudden it's time to film a new season and somebody had drastically changed their appearance in any show or movie or anything that you've done where you're going, that's not the person we casted. No, 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 no. I, I, okay. that, I haven't. Um, no, not at all. You know, you know who I, I always, I always think what? of, and I, I always feel bad for is Jennifer Gray. Jennifer Gray. Yeah, Jennifer Gray. <laughs> I knew because, you were going to say you knew that. I was say it that. went in because, my head. Yeah, because everyone always thinks of her dirty dancing, but she was a sister in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and you recognized her, you know, right off the bat. And then she, you know, changed her nose, and which is is wild because so many people change their nose, but she was recognizable. And I never once thought of her going, boy, if she fixes that nose, she'd be a lot better looking. But when she changed her nose, she looked like a totally different person. And it it changed her life in a bad way. I don't know if in a bad way. I mean, you'd have to ask her that, right? So that's like, that's a, that's a Jennifer Grey question. Did it affect? Yeah. Were people talking about it? Yeah. And was it at a time where that was kind of shocking? Yes. And I don't think she intended it to to be that dramatic, no. right? I think she just wanted to fix her nose. And like most people do, you you probably don't really notice it. You're just like, hmm, they look really good right now, you know? And I think she was probably going for that. But you're right. It completely changed her entire face. And not for the worst. She No, she was if it was a normal then, person, if she was your neighbor, you'd go, boy, that is a, you look great, right? That's what you would say. Cause she did look really better as a person, but she was she recognizable was that way. way. Listen, she was yes. beautiful either way. She just didn't look like the same gal. No. Like it just, it, it was, it was, it was shocking. And I guess that's the chance <laughs> you take. Yeah. She's I've never one. seen that and before. I've never seen other that actors, before. It's their job. They change their hair. Yeah. Right. Um, sometimes yeah. they're, you know, Sometimes they put on prosthetics on their face. Sometimes, you know, they they wear wigs or they change their actual hair. They go up and down and wait and all of that. But that's all part of the job. But remember when we had Paul Ruddy on, the casting director, my yeah. friend, and he he would say, you know, actors, they think if they're not booking, like, I should go do this makeover, right? Like, I should get a haircut, change my hair color, do this. And he said, you know, that's never the answer. The answer is always in your work. You know, yeah. why you're not booking or you are booking is because of your work and the time you put into it and your performance. It's not about what you look like. So I think that, um, you know, to bring back to your point, that that doesn't really that's not a big payoff to just go and like change the way you look. That's not going to yeah. that's not going to, you know, mix things up for you. Yeah, that is. Uh, anyway, yeah, that was that was wild. And honestly, I think if she if she was my neighbor or a friend, I would say the nose job looks fantastic. Good for you. Yeah. But it just, I did not recognize her at all. It was, it was so weird. I felt bad for her. Like, what is she going to do? Go back and say, go back to the way, go to the doctor and say, fix it. Go back the way it was. I mean, it was, yeah. it was, it was, it was very strange. And I'm sure she's it still was. a great actress. Yeah. Yeah. And she's, Damn. you know, listen, I think, the, I think the shock wore off and then, you know, people accepted her for what she looks like now, which they should. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was a little bit shocking at a time when a lot of people didn't do that. Right. No, <laughs> no, no, it's that's uh, no, that's a true. It's something else. It's um, it's funny. It's just, just thinking, you know, Ferris Bueller's day off, I think came out like an 86 dirty dancing came out like an 87. How much has the industry changed from the eighties to now? A lot. I mean, everything, everything from content to, you know, the amount of actors, the, all of it is, it's, it, it's just very, very different. Um, but you know, you can say that about a lot of things in life, everything has evolved and everything has changed in the eighties. You know, um, there was a lot of like using the same actors. Like, so, you, you know, you had your favorite actors and they, they did genres and, you know, they worked over and over and over again. And I feel like now it's more of like the next best thing, you know, the undiscovered and, and a lot of that and less of, you know. But then again, there's a lot of resurgence of careers with people because they're bringing yes. back, you know, like a good feeling, right? So the, it's exactly. right now it's a real toss up, you know, which I kind of like. Um, it's it, There's so many platforms. There's so many projects. There's so much programming. And there's room for everybody. So I really kind of like that. It's not as exclusive of a circle of actors that are working. So I like that about it. 
but it was much simpler. You know, listen, life was life in general was so much simpler in the 80s. Can we go back? Can we go do a redo yeah. at least for can we just have a week back in the 80s and like let loose for a minute? <laughs> um, I swear there's nothing like the 80s. And, um, you know, it, it's just I think pressures of life are so much more now. Uh, just, the, you know, pressures of, you know, your social media and there's just so much more you have to do. So it's it's just, you know, it's just a lot more work and a lot less fun. But I would say that about everything in life since the 80s. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people, though, especially as you said, when you pull actors back from the 80s and you put them in stuff now people are people kind of goes back to what that warm feeling you know as a viewer you go i remember you know and and yeah. then i always as i said i'm always the king of of going to info and going to who's in it you know i want to know make sure i'm watching the person i think i'm watching but I, I do feel that way you know i feel that way if i if i saw jennifer gray in something or anyone else and i go oh yeah i just mentioned william h macy and he was outstanding in Boogie Nights. Well, that came out in the late nineties and I know he's done other stuff, but man, he's so good and shameless. I'm like, this guy's an outstanding actor. And I think in the show, he plays someone in his fifties, but in reality, he's 72 and yeah. he's going, you know, he's, he's done, done an outstanding job. But I was like, when you're able to pull people back, I'm again, I'm not in the industry and I'm always amazed how many talented people there are out there. Like if you ever go to a play and you go, man, there are a lot of really good people out there, but there's such a small percentage of people that, that make it as we hear all the time and you hear it more than me, people that said I packed up and I followed my dream and I moved to Los Angeles and I'm going to make it. And then a lot of times yeah. they just don't right. 97% of them or something don't make it, but they, yeah. they chase that dream. And, and, you know, you made it, you made it, you made it into that small, small circle. And um, I always think as a producer, if you're starting a new show and you decide to go with a bunch of unknowns, that's a big gamble on your end to go. Can I survive with a bunch of unknowns? Is the, is the product that good? to give these people their first start. Yeah, I think for younger audiences, it really, it, it's okay. Um, it works. Uh, also, I think nowadays, um, people, you can be, you can have a project that's super successful, gets a lot of attention, you did a great job, but then you might not continue to work, right? I yeah, feel like yeah. um, that, that saying about 15 minutes of fame, I've never seen it more true than I see it now. Absolutely. You see somebody that's right. like, you know, this thing, they're the hot new thing. And then you never hear from them or hear about them anymore. And I think that has a lot to do with the media and the, uh, people's attention span. It's always like it's, you know, it's this TikTok frame of mind of, you know, reels of just moving on, moving on, moving on, quick clips, moving on. And which is different from back then, whereas, you know, you you like to watch people's careers. You like seeing like for me, it's Molly Ringwald. When I see her, I'm like, oh, yes. You know, it's that warm feeling. And William H. Macy, like Fargo, come on. He's such a good actor. He's such a good character actor. Yes. And, he, you know, he's a classic. And, um, you know, it's, you know, it's that pull. It's that push and pull of, you know, having your solid, good working actors that everybody wants to continue to see with, you know, fresh new faces. Yeah, you know? no, you're, you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right. You know, I, I think I told you on a previous show that, I always will look at celebrity birthdays. I'm always curious to know, you know, uh, you know how old certain people are and, and, you know, where they are. And it's amazing how many of them show up that are now, say, TikTok influencer or, you know, yeah. uh, Instagram influencer. And I was like, I don't know any of these people. And, yeah. um, and it, it, I almost wonder, is it dangerous to become, that's your goal, to be, you know, say, I want to be an influencer. And does that change... I don't want to put this all on the Kardashians, but did the Kardashians start a bunch of this in your opinion of, of, Hey, you know, the influencing, you don't have to be a singer, an actor, but boy, you can become very famous, very popular by, you know, going about it this way. Well, what I think is that all these platforms were going to happen anyways. And the, the Kardashians were just ahead of the game. I mean, this Good is point. how this is, you know, they, people want to blame them for a lot of things and say they don't do anything. They have, a sense of being ahead a couple steps ahead of everybody else and um that's something to be credited for i mean that is that is that's a gift i agree you know and you know as far as like influencers go and everything and people say like oh they don't do anything it is so much work like it is a full-time job for people that think it's just an easy thing to 
you know, make content all day long and then it be the right content and content that goes viral and that you get the, you know, you get the sponsorship and you get all that. This is, it's, it's just as hard of work. Honestly, yep. it's a different kind of talent. No, it's not a, um, you know, it's not an acting thing and it may look shallow or superficial to some people, but they've got a business sense about them. Otherwise they wouldn't be making money doing this and they wouldn't be spending exactly. their entire days and hours of their life doing this. If it wasn't, you know, paying off. If it if, if this was not profitable, they wouldn't be doing it. And um, it's obviously generating money. This is obviously a business. So whether you like it or you don't, you have to admit and you have to realize it's a business and it's not going anywhere right now. This is what everybody, this is what the kids watch. This is what the, the youth, you know, our future, <laughs> our future world, this is what they're watching. This is what they like. This is what they find entertaining. So you have, you have to cater to that. that there's a market for it. It's, it's, and it, it's not easy making the content, uploading it to all the different platforms, editing it. Um, you know, the girls have to do their, and some guys too, they do their hair and their makeup. I mean, this is like a full time job. Yeah. I agree. Staying on it's top of not... all the trends. Yeah. Being ahead of everybody else. This is not, this is not them sitting on the couch, shooting a video, posting it, you know, uploading it and boom, they make money. This is not, they make it look like that maybe, but that's not what it is. Wake exactly up call. right. Yeah. Exactly right. All right, let's get to uh, today's mailbag. Again, if you want to ask Nicole a question, it's easily it's easy. All you have to do is go to perfectlytwistedpod.com and uh, ask questions. This one is uh, these are from David. Okay, and David didn't give a last name, but that's fine. Uh, first Hi, question: What is your favorite movie of all time? Oh, listen, I hate that question of favorites of everything. I, there's no favorite. <laughs> you have to ask me in, in a mood on a certain day. I mean, one minute it'll be uh, 16 Candles. The next yes. day it'll be Mary Poppins, um, Grease. I I'm trying to think of like the classics from when I was a kid that made me fall in love with cinema. Um, definitely like Grease was life changing. Mary Poppins was amazing. Um, all of John Hughes films changed my life. What's your favorite John and Hughes then, film? Huh? What's your favorite what? John Hughes film? I mean, I, I have to st stick with 16 candles. I, I have to. Me too. It's just, uh, it, you know, it was a big part of my life. And yeah, that just hits home for me. Um, you know, I, and it just depends. Like, and then I, I like, you know, stand up like Dave Chappelle. <laughs> give me, a, give me a, yeah. an hour of Dave Chappelle that, you know, on certain days that that's what I need in my life. It, it you know, purple rain. Like, you know, I like corny. Uh, dramatic it was visually beautiful it just i don't have a favorite i never ever ever have a favorite of anything good good deal well it shows you aren't boring all right favorite drink what's your favorite drink okay well i am boring i know what you're, um, you're gonna say water aren't you what are you water, gonna say? water and you know what specifically spa water is what i call it so i either put like cucumber slices and lemon slices in it or orange slices and strawberry slices whatever in water yeah, water's my jam. <laughs> I, I'm a big water drinker too, but if it was my last drink, I would I would have. I think I'd honestly, I'm a I'd go diet Dr Pepper. You can't find it any, anywhere. So, but you it, you it, live off that. And so, well, no, I'm so my last <laughs> drink. All right, I'm not a big alcoholic drinker. Oh, so you're last. I, 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 I do, but my, like you're saying, the ice has to be right. You know, it has to be the the little crushed ice. And then uh, for some reason, I had, a, I had an aunt and uncle. Who, who I loved and and they're a big part of my childhood. And every time you went to their house, there's Diet Dr. Pepper in the house. It just takes me back to to my childhood. But I, I drink a ton of water. That's all I drink. I don't drink anything else either. I hate anything diet flavor, that that diet aftertaste. I can't tell the difference though in Diet Dr. Oh. Pepper. That's why I like it. That's why I like and it. Then and I won't drink regular sodas. Yeah. Another fun fact, I've never had a soda. Never. My son either. My son doesn't drink soda. Never have. I've tasted. I've tasted yeah. other people's. Like I've sipped. I've probably tasted most of them. I would say not all. Like I've never tried a diet Dr Pepper. I've never. That's never even been in my mouth. Yeah. Um, Coca Cola uh, in a bottle. Anything? I don't think I've ever had out of a bottle. I've taken a sip out of somebody's like cup. Yeah. But so I don't if you like go to it. a restaurant, you'll say water cup every time. Every time, just water. Fine. That's what water. my son does too. My son does the yeah. same thing. Hasn't had a soda forever. I'll, yeah. I'll occasionally have an iced tea. Yeah. 
like at a restaurant because I always like restaurant iced tea the best. Yeah. Um, it's but no, nope, that's to make it, it home. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, I, I got you. Uh, two more questions. Do you play video games? Why or why not? I do not play video games. Um, I did when I was a kid I, back in like the eighties we we'll go back there when times were fun. Like, um, I loved centipede and like Pac-Man yeah. and I had the first Atari game soul console, uh, pitfall. And I, I never even went past like the, the first, you know, ones that just came with the console. Like, um, there was like a duck one and like pong and, um, pitfall. And like, I was happy with those. I started buying yeah. other ones and I was like, what is this? Nope. Get it out of here. I like that pitfall. I like that pong. Um, and now I just, those remotes, like the, what do you call it? That you have to like control it with the controller? No, yeah. I, I do not have um, the coordination, the patience, <laughs> any of it. I'm terrible at like, con I can't control any of it. So I give up and walk away. And there's just things I could be doing with my time at 50 years old, 51 years old. <laughs> You know who was a it's huge a video That is funny. You know who was a huge video game guy was Gary Coleman. Gary Coleman grew up in my oh. neighborhood and and you know I think I've told you the story where you know he was doing different strokes and he would always have to go in and, and learn his lines but when his parents let him you know hang out with the rest of us we'd shoot to the arcade and that guy loved video games. You know I always thought it was wild but he always had more quarters than the rest of us had. It was endless amount of quarters that Gary Coleman had compared to the rest of us but that guy what, was always like go to the video. arcade. God, he loved going to the arcade. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I you that, know what? Listen, I like I, I like an arcade. I still nah, I, I would like to say I still like an arcade, but now they're all those like bright video games yeah. and it's so loud and you get tickets and all that. But I like skee ball. Yeah. Right where you roll yeah. the ball. Yeah, I used to love that. I still I still can get down with that. Yeah. Do you, do you throw it straight or do you bank it off the side? I bank it off the side. <laughs> <laughs> I would never get so, any so in if I. I went straight. Yeah, I mean, I'll, so I'll I. throw a random straight one here and there, but um, no, I bank it off the side, just that like my funny. bowling. <laughs> I bought my uh, my youngest son. I bought him a PS4, and this is a few years ago. And I bought him a PS4, and I got him Grand Theft Auto was the game. And Grand Theft Auto is brutal. You know, it's basically you're just hijacking cars and punching people on the street, and. Um, so I'm sitting down and I'm watching him play. And he's like, I've never played this game before. And I said, okay, I'll, I'm going to watch. Immediately, he's in Los Angeles. He goes right by Dodger Stadium. And he drives into a seedy neighborhood, pulls right into the parking lot, walks into a strip club. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like he, I was like, you never played this game before? Like, he seemed like he knew where the strip club was. And I'm like, what are we doing here? We're just going to sit here for a while. I'm like, we're just going to sit in the strip club for a while. And it was it was so crazy. And I was like, I can't believe I bought this game for a little kid. He was like nine. It was, like, it was like the worst parent of all time. We're just sitting there running over people, punching hookers in the face and going to strip clubs. And I'm like, what did I just do? You know? He's like, but he pulled the line. I've never played. Sure you haven't. You know exactly where played. you're going. This right. reminds, reminds me of a funny story. I was in, I had a yeah. meeting with a guy I was working with, and he drove a very specific car, okay? Um, yeah. And when I say specific, is specific in style and color. And um, we had this meeting, da da da, and then it's over. We we leave the, the executive's office, and I go run an errand or something, and then I'm driving, and I pass by the strip club. <laughs> this car is parked right out front. <laughs> so, <laughs> I text him like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> like nothing. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "Are you sure?" And he's like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "Okay, have a good day." <laughs> <laughs> That is funny as so. hell. There's a difference. It's like we can come together and be so the same in one moment, and then we leave the meeting, and like I'm going to pick up my kid from school, and he goes to the strip club in the middle of the that day. That is funny as so. hell. Yeah. Guys, guys. All right. Last question for you. So, Nicole, do you have any hobbies? Who has time for hobbies? Um, do I have any hobbies? No. I mean, if I had any spare time, I am – getting outside and going for walks and I guess that's my hobby it's like being in nature getting outside of like hearing anything I like to go where it's quiet and um you know kind of realize my place on this earth how small we all are um and but hobbies 
Yeah. And I'm, I'm like one of those people where it's like you mentioned crafts or something like that. My skin starts crawling and I've got to run, <laughs> you know, I got to yeah. get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> none of that. Uh, uh. I am not the one for any of that. So I'm not really good with hobbies. Um, oh, I like plants. I do a lot of like, um, I take care of my plants and I like, uh, we started propagating a lot. I do that. That's kind of a hobby, I guess. It is. Propagating. It is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, David, appreciate the, again, the, the questions for Nicole. Again, Nicole's mailbag, it's right on the website, perfectlytwistedpod.com. And uh, again, we'll try and get your questions on the air, but otherwise that will do it for this show. Yeah. Thanks guys. And listen, I really encourage people to watch, go on YouTube and watch our show. Um, it's, 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 I don't know. I think it has a fun look. What do you think, Dave? I think it's fun. It's fun to watch and listen to. I understand that sometimes we're driving and, you know, podcasts are for a reason. But um, if you're at home or whatever, check us out. Check us out on YouTube because um, especially when we have guests, I don't know, it's a real cool looking show and it has a good feel and um, probably makes a lot more sense if you watch. <laughs> I, I agree. Also, if you're, if you're a new viewer, new listener, uh, and and you're, you're liking what you're listening to, please go back and watch some of the previous episodes. I think Nicole's done a great job. Oh, thank you. It's been a good time. Okay, well, we'll see you next week, huh? All right, we'll see you next week. Have a good one. Bye, guys.